Shalom, we had a little bit of a technical difficulty. Mm -hmm. And so what we're going to do is seek to do a, a restart, uh, at least not have to go through a restart, a restart of what we was teaching on. And this right here, the picture is a kind of a little, a little strange, right? But his hands are behind his back right here. This is from an Ethiopian painting of the Akeda. Mm -hmm. The word Akeda refers to the binding of Yishak. Now, what does this have to do with, okay, we touched on the banner, so we'll close that out. This is regarding Sukkot, right? The present the reason for the present season, right? When we're speaking on tabernacles. So this is a message for tabernacles because in this present season, in this present time, we're in the, the first day of what's known as Sukkot, right? Sukkot. In the Gutas, right? In the pure Shemitic, the Ethiopic, we call it Metzel. Metzalet, right? Metzalet. In the, in the Royal Amharic, which is really the pure language, the, the Shemitic, when we talk about the good, is about our first language, right? Our first language. It is Yadas Baal, Das. Das mean huts, right? Tabernacle, right? Now, the literal idea, right? Or at least the, the teaching tool idea is the Lord's Supper, right? But when we go to the Old Covenant, right, we have this sort of idea right here, right? The idea of a uh, tabernacle, in-gathering, right? In-gathering or building booths, right? Building booths. So what's the significance of Sukkot, right? What's the significance of Sukkot and the building of booths? Mm hmm. How is that significant? There's a, there's a scripture that keeps coming to mind, and I'm going to share this particular scripture with you. And it is from Isaiah or Isaiah, right? Isaiah. Right? I think this is a rhema word here. I'm going to share this as a rhema word and go forward with the, the revelation in this season. That has been given to I to share, you know, to share with the I, right? And the rhema word, right? The rhema word right here is from Isaiah. And there's a particular word here that every time I look at this particular picture of the, it's a Beta Ethiopian, Beta Israel, um, you can see the, the hut, Right, how the hut is put together. So when we see that idea in like so-called Africa of the building of huts, essentially, right, essentially what we're seeing is is the sukkah, right? The sukkah, which is the in gathering, right? That in gathering, that dwelling in booths, right? Because Israel dwelt in booths, right? So there needs to be a teaching on on Sukkot, right? What does Sukkot, what does ingathering? Because ingathering is not overstood, right? According to Yahweh's Moedim, according to his appointment. So this is an, uh, an appointed season. Some call this the fall festival season, right? The fall festival season. Now, the word that we wanted to share was concerning Zion, right? Concerning Zion. Right, and I think it has in the King James speaks about a cottage, something of that effect, that one and eight. Right, it's actually one and eight, where it says in Isaiah one and eight, we turn our scriptures to Isaiah, Isaiah, Ishiyayo, right, one and eight. We have that particular reading and feeding right there. This is just a key word that the Holy Spirit has revealed to me concerning this tabernacle season and this tabernacle time. And the Holy Spirit said, go to this word and meditate upon this word. One and eight. Ba'amorinya, besema'a wada menfis kedusa hadu amlak, yezionim a seit lich, 
به واین بوتا انداله داس به دوبا ات کلت وایت ات کلت وایت ات کلتم انداله گوجو او گوجو اند ت کب بچم کتما هونا کرچ وایت اند ت کب بچم کتما هونا کرچ کرچ right now the turgum or the translation in the book of the prophet isaiah chapter 1 verse 8 it says and the daughter of zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard right as a cottage in a vineyard yes yonim sait lich be woin bota woin the 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 woin right the woin the woin is the the vine is speaking of the vine the woin right the woin bota bota is a place in dalle right das so the daughter of zion has been in that sense arach right hona arach she has been left right she has been left almost like we say no child left behind but she has been left here according to isaiah 1 and 8 and the daughter of zion is left as a as a suka now here's i wasn't planning on doing this but i think this is necessary to touch on right here and let's see if we can bring this up right this is the word program right now we was actually looking up this is a interesting one let's actually get another window cuz we want to hold that window for a little bit later on cuz some people say that mohammed is in the bible right and so we followed up on that and got to that root word right and we find that if you if they say such then it's interesting what that word really is and and the revelation that comes from that so that's another teaching right there now here was on prayer uh to pilla my pilla pilla in the hebrew to pilla right and prayer in the hebrew right prayer in the hebrew or getting to the hebrew word has to do with intercession right it has to do with intercession it has to do with supplication has to do with him but if we get to this root word down here since we're touching on this and this is what you're seeing before you saw I want to share with my brothers and sisters sometimes don't have the opportunity or time right um palal right palal mean to judge so prayer is really to judge right officially or mentally and by extension right by extension is to intercede and pray and then you see the right down there that's a primitive root So we have this in the scripture as to entreat, to judge, to make a prayer, to pray, right, to make supplication. So prayer is actually from the Hebrew palal, right, palal, or some might say falal, right. It is to judge officially or mentally, right, to judge. That's what the root of prayer has to do with, right. So that's just a, a word on the side. right but a very interesting word right there so when we pray from the hebraic sense is is judging right is it's a matter of judging right but not judging in the sense of condemnation or quitting right but it is almost like a weighing and measuring right weighing and measuring it's a, it's a very interesting idea a thought to think on now here we want to look up the word cottage I want to look up this word cottage, right? Because we find the word cottage. This is the revelation, the Isaiah one and eight revelation for Suka, right? Or Sukot. Now we find that in Isaiah there are two chapters, right? And in Zephaniah there is one, right? So here we want to look up. Okay, what is the Hebrew? What is the Hebrew word? We hadn't done this for this particular Hebrew word, so we want to do this right now for this Hebrew word. And we have there you go. we have suka right suka let's uh, zoom in right there we have suka get a little closer right there so you can see this right here right suka 
right? Well, here they have the C, but it's really in the S sound, right? So it's not kuka, it's suka, right? Suka, right? A, like we say celebrity. So the C is in the sense of celebrity in that sense and to celebrate, to honor, right? So to honor the holy day, it's a hut or a lear. Now in the King James use, it means booth, cottage, a covert, a pavilion, you see over here, a tabernacle, a tent, right? This is the root right there, right? So this verse right here that we have, zoom out a little bit, this verse right here that we have, okay, let's bring this out right here. And the daughter of Zion, of Sion, remember saying the daughter, not saying Zion, but the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge, Right, as a lodge, just curiosity on that. So we're gonna go down to that word lodge and see what lodge comes up. And here we have um, Meluna, right? And the Meluna is another kind of a hut, right? A Meluna, right? A Meluna. So we have Meluna right there, another kind of a hut or a hammock, right? The edge, right? As a lodge, right? As a lodge in a garden of cucumbers. Then it says right here, as a besieged city, right? As a besieged city, right? In the Tekabachim, in the Tekabachim, in the Tekabachim, Katama Hona Karech, right? Karech. Now there's some other usage of that. We're not going to. Well, you know, out of curiosity, we'll just like to look at that. That's 44 to H4412. And let's just back this down right here. The machine's a little slow. Hope to get through this right here. Where is it? Okay, this is 55. 4412 will be large. The second word, right? Or Maluna. Now, right here it says cottages, right? As cottages and the seacoast shall be dwellings and cottages for the shepherds and folds of flock. Now, why is that interesting? Because that's also part of a part of the readings and part of the revelations that have been given this season. But that is uh, cottages there is kara, right? Is the word kara. So even though we have three different places here in the scriptures, we see that the Hebrew, right? And the royal Amharic, is one and the same in spirit and in truth for Isaiah 1 and 8. So Isaiah 1 and 8, what the Holy Spirit had given I concerning this uh, this imagery right here for, for, for Sukkah, right? For Sukkah is a singular. So that's one booth, right? It's one booth. Now, what is the meaning of this, right? In other words, what does this mean both in its type? So before we can appropriate the substance of it, before we can appropriate the substance of it, we first need to comprehend and to study the type, right? Study the type, study the symbology, right? The symbolic, the symbolic logic, right? Or the um, parabolic, I like to use the term the parabolic logic, like right? it's a parable. Remember, he says that to them he speaks in parables, but to us, right, who are the Dekamezamorit, who are the Talmudim, or the disciples who seek to be discipled in the discipline, right? You know, as Max said, a discipline of mind is a basic ingredient of genuine morality and therefore a spiritual strength. Then what does Huari Apollos, the great apostle, say in Romans, Romans uh, chapter 12, right? Not to be conformed to the world or the worldly way of looking at it. So when we talk about Sukkot, people think of the, you know, the, the outer aspect of literally building tabernacles and booths, and that was under the old covenant. Right? As a type, as a shadow. But now in the new covenant, when people ask, well, uh, can we really fulfill this? How can we really fulfill this in this time? Right? Since this is the first day, this is the, 
this will be the first day of um of of Sukkot. Right? This is the first day of Sukkot. This is the first day of tabernacles. Right? So what's the key message here? What's the key theme here for us? And as I've recommended before, Hebrew for Christians, right, overall is a very good site as far as a reference, some of the key themes, right? Some of the key, it's very well studied because one's and one's coming from a, a, a Torah base, a Judaic base, and accepting Moshia, Yeshua, might not accept his, they might not have, you know, recognize his humanity. We're speaking of his Ethiopian, his blackness. You, you see, that's the issue, but we recognize that it, the grace is important. Right, the the grace. So when we speak about the race of Yeshua, right, this is especially for the lost sheep of the Beit Israel, right. This is especially for us because that whitewash, right, most maliciously has been put on I and I. You know what I mean? This this is to breed the sense of uh, self hatred, right? Of self hatred. It's a diabolic. It's a cointel pro. It's a spiritual cointel pro. Right, but COINTEL Pro counterintelligence basically is another way of saying devilish. Right? Because the devil is a liar, is a slanderer. Right? So they have lied and slandered both his humanity, right, as well as his people according to the flesh. But they've also lied and blasphemed and, and slandered his gospel or his good news. Right? The good news. So let's go right here for a moment and just do a really quick search right here. Let's do a really quick search. Um, just uh, abide with me for a moment, brothers and sisters. And I want to just go to the Hebrew for a uh, Christian site. All right. Let's go to Sukkot right here. We're just going to just, just put that in right there and see what comes up. See, see, see what comes up. Well, our... Our brethren's page does not come up as one of the first ones. So what we're going to do is modify the search a little bit. And we're going to do Hebrew, right? And then we'll put the number four, right? Hebrew four, right? And we hope that it, it narrows it down. So Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, right? The Feast of Tabernacles. Let me share this with you as well. So you can, if you're interested, you also can look this up for yourself and study this and download it and, you know, have it as a reading, as, as a study. Sukkot, Feast of Tabernacle, Hebrew for Christians, right? Hebrew for Christians. The seventh feast given to Israel is called Sukkot or the Feast of Tabernacles. And it's observed in the fall. And then over here, the reading, the Torah readings for this week, Hebrew for Christians, um, the high holiday, the high holy day, right? Sukkot right here, right? And we visit that page on the 22nd. And then there's also, you can download a PDF on the festival of Sukkot, right? So this will be recommended reading, right? Recommended reading. We've already vetted much of this to say that, um, one of the remaining things that people don't see is that humanity, right? You know, the fullness of that humanity. They might still believe, you know, um, what they might believe according to the, according to the flesh, you know, the whitewash, a little bit of that, because that, that's a, such a prevailing, especially when we see that the people of Yahweh are so off, right? Uh, we have been so off. Because remember what Israel's role and responsibility was to be Yahweh's priest to the nations, right? Why do we end up, right, in this captivity? It is not because of our righteousness, but it's because of our, uh, speaking of the generations leading up to us, our disobedience. So we have a choice, right? We, we, we definitely very clearly have a choice. That's why it says if, mm-hmm. It says if, so we still have our free will. So this will be like an introduction on this level to Sukkot, which is the seventh and the final feast of the Moedim of Yahweh Elohim that's given to Israel called Sukkot, 
right? Remember Psalm 60, right? We touched on Psalm 60 and that revelation right there, 60, I think in verse six, right? There's a key revelation for us and for the elect, the remnant, Rastafari remnant, right? But first of all, we have to know, well, who are we? See, the identity is key because then we, we recognize that this scripture is written to specifically is written to so-called lost sheep of the house of Israel, so-called black and, and, and Hispanic, right? Or Afro, Afro-American, Afro-Hispanic, right? And even many of the Native American tribes, right? That who, to who the great spirit is Yahweh, right? Yahweh, that's Yahweh. Amen, amen, right? But remember that the role of Yehuda, Yehuda, Yikdem, Yehuda first, right? And what does Yehuda mean? What does Yehuda mean? Yehuda mean the praises of Yah, right? The, when we say hallelujah, the praises. But it, the, teach, the scriptures teach us to give praise with understanding. We have to give praise, right, with understanding. There's many out there that hoop and holler and fall down and, and gyrate and seem like they're getting possessed with the un, unholy you know, well, they call it the Holy Ghost, but really that's unholy. It's a phantasm. It's not the true Ruach HaKodesh. Why? How do we know that? Because it contradicts his word, right? It contradicts his word and we judge it by the fruit thereof. You shall know them by their fruit. So we're speaking of the Feast of Tabernacles here. Sukkot is observed in what is known as the fall time, you know, spring summer, winter, fall. Well, this is the fall time, right? The fall festival season. From the 15th, right, to the 22nd of Tishri. And in this season, it is October 8th. October 8th, 2014. Which is also the first day, right, or the blood moon. This is where the blood moon sign as well. So we have this blood moon sign. And we are commanded to tabernacle, right? To Sukkot, right? So what does Sukkot mean, right? What are we to do? How are we to be responsible? Well, the first thing we need is give us a teaching of his majesty because we don't want our devil's philosophy. So there's a lot of ideas circulating out there. But what we've endeavored to do is to go to the law and to the testimony as Isaiah also speaks to, to the law and to the testimony, right? To in Isaiah chapter eight, go to chapter eight for a moment of Isaiah, right? And we'll find in Isaiah chapter eight, verse 20, it says to the law, which is Torah and to the testimony, the Misakar, right? The Misakar, right? The Misakar is regarding the testimony, right? See that testimony also is, 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 uh, Sama'itat, the Sama'it, right? The Shema'it is, is, is the word for martyr. The martyrs are those who cause to be heard the good news even to the cost, right, of their, their lives, right? Or their friends and their families and others fleshy, right? Because they are related to us in the flesh, but when we are born again, we find that there is a, non-relativity there's a lack of relativity to the spirit that's why i said if you love mother father sister brother son daughter you know house lands more than me and that's yeshua speaking hamushiach our high priest kahin hagadol speaking then you are not worthy uh, you're not worthy of i then therefore you cannot receive this right you cannot receive his salvation you see, because this is the basic discipleship instruction that he instructs us. And I know many of us have struggles, right, and wrestlings and temptations with our fleshy, right? And we go through great bouts of, of, of agony and, and suffering and pathos because of that. How come they, they think these things about me and I'm trying to show them the good news? A certain point is a certain point of separation. It's necessary. But we, it begins from where? In our mind, in our spirit, right? It begins in spirit and in truth, amen? In, in grace and in truth, right? And this is why this is such a key word that we have here, 
right? It's the key word because it says to the law, the Torah, and to the testimony. If they speak not, if they preach not, if they teach not according to this word, according to this davar, it is because there is no light in them. There's ignorance, there's spiritual darkness in them. Their, their eye is not single. Their eye is divided between the fleshical interest and maybe a spirituality. You got like one foot in the kingdom and one foot out. If, if you have one foot in and one foot out, you're going to get split like the hypocrite. Right? That's why the double-minded, the double-hearted, right? It, it says to us not to be double-minded. And there's a word the other day when we was preaching and teaching the Holy Spirit is reminding me of this. And I want to share this with you, beloved. I want to share this with you. Let's go to James really quick. James, James chapter four. We call this war and rumor of war, which is going on in the world. From whence does all this war and rumor of war come from? Right? From whence does all this war 